Welcome to the last part of the Leatherback project. In this video, we are going to look at the Leatherback environment. You can find the tutorial on the Litchi AI Hub under Isaac Lab projects and Leatherback community project and just scroll down to the bottom. So here you will find the environment for the Leatherback environment script. But before we start, I want to mention that I have set up a new GitHub following the template generator from the Isaac Lab tutorials. This one you can find on the official website under developer's guide, build your own project and tasks. And here I've went over the steps, how to create it. And what this does is it creates an external project that allows you to have your own folder or repository. And it's just a very clean way to share and work on a project. I will link the documentation, the GitHub, and the platform with the tutorial in the description below. Okay, so we are going to have a look at the leather bag environment. Here we're going to utilize the direct workflow, which is different from the manager workflow. They both have their own benefits. And I advise you to look at these two tutorials and videos, which are explaining the differences. So inside the script, we will find two classes, the Leatherback Environment Configuration and the Leatherback Environment. They're both inheriting from the direct workflow that we will see in a moment. And then we also have a waypoints.py script, which is a small script to visualize the cones that we see in the robots training. Okay, so let us dive into the Leatherback Environment.py. Right now I'm inside Cursor, which is very similar to VS Code. And I'm inside the GitHub repository, which is the external isolated environment. So in here, if we go into source, leatherback, task, direct, and again, leatherback, we will find all the scripts that we've also mentioned in the previous videos. And inside leatherback environment.py, we can find the script. Here, we first define a lot of modules that we have already covered before. And now we're going to have a look at the two classes. The first one is the leatherback environment configuration. This one is inheriting from the direct reinforcement learning environment configuration. Here, we have a lot of parameters that we should specify. These ones I've explained on the platform. So for example, we have the decimation which is set to four. This means that we have four physics steps for each action from the reinforcement learning policy. The maximum episode duration before reset is set to 20 seconds. Then we have an action space of two, which means that we have two outputs from the neural network. One is for steering and one for throttle. And then we have eight observations, which are the inputs into the neural network. Okay, next up we have the simulation settings where we set the physics frequency to 60 Hertz. This one is also matching the decimation frequency, the setting we can see here. Then we're going to define the articulation CFG and specify our leatherback that we have imported from this file here. We also set up the waypoints configuration. Afterwards, we're defining our joint names, set the environment spacing to 32 meters, and finally set up the interactive scene configuration with a default of 4096 environments and setting the replicate physics to true. Okay, so next up, we're coming to the Leatherback Environment class. Here we will define our Markov decision processes. And here we will cover multiple functions, starting with the initialization. First, we're going to identify some joints. These will be the throttle and the steering joints. Then we're going to initialize some state tracking tensors. These will track the current state of the environments, and we will use them later. Then we're going to set up our waypoint system with a number of goals of 10, the target positions, the markers, and the target index for each parallel environment. And finally, we will find some hyperparameter configurations. This will help us to define the task difficulty and the reward structure that we will see later. Next up, we have the scene construction, which is defined in the setup scene function. Here we will define a 500 square meter dark plane, which has some parameters like static and dynamic friction. Then we are going to initialize our robot. We also have the visualization setup for the waypoints and the light. And finally, we are handling the parallel copies of the environment which register the robot while preventing collisions. Next up, I want to cover two functions in one, the prephysics step and the apply actions. These are responsible for the action processing. We will start with the prephysics steps. This is processing the raw neural network outputs. So basically the actions, which are the throttle and the steering. And the steps are quite similar. First, we will define which action belongs to which joint. Then we will repeat it for all four wheels in the case of the throttle. Then we can scale it and normalize it and also clamp it to prevent extreme velocities. For the steering, it's quite similar. Here we will also select the actions. Then we're going to duplicate it for the both steering actions. We're going to scale and normalize it. And finally, we're going to clamp it to prevent extreme steering angles. And next up, we're coming to the apply action function. So this function applies the processed actions to the internal buffers. So it's important that it doesn't immediately affect the simulation. It's just updating the internal buffers. So basically we will set the joint velocity target and position target for the wheels and the steering. And then later we will write this data to the simulator, which then transfers the buffered values to the actual simulator. I've also written a pseudocode of how this would work. So when we're calling the step function on all the vectorized environments, we are first processing the actions from the neural network's outputs. Then we are performing multiple physics steps, depending on the decimation parameter that we have set earlier. In this case, it would be four. 
So we would apply the actions, which would mean we're writing it to the internal buffers. Then later we would write this data to the simulation and execute the action along with the step. And then we would also update the buffers from the simulator. I also wanted to share a little practical example to showcase how this might work. So the neural network gives us the output 0.5 for the throttle and minus 0.3 for the steering. These ones are getting first normalized scaled and then applied to all four wheels the same for the steering and during one single reinforcement learning step so for one policy we have the decimation for four which means the wheels and the steering will will have this applied action for four consecutive physics steps before the policy produces a new action next up we're coming to the observations this one i would like to explain with the image that i've made so we have two target position informations one is the position and arrow from the robot to the target the distance the other one is the heading arrow so basically the angle between the steering angle and the target's position and next up we have six robot state informations these are velocities in the x and y direction as well as the angular velocity in the z direction and then we also have the throttle velocities and the steering angles next up we have the reward system and the get rewards function here we'll find three rewards one is for the position progress reward the heading alignment reward and the goal achievement bonus but here we will see a positive reward when moving towards the target and negative when moving away the heading alignment is rewarding it for facing toward the target and the goal achievement bonus is a big goal when achieving the targets and we have a very small episode termination logic this one is checking if the maximum allowed episode length of 20 seconds is violated and also if it managed to complete all the 10 waypoints and finally, we have the environment reset logic. This one is handling the resets for each environment to their initial states. It is also handling some uh, randomizations to improve learning and also applying the states to the simulations, which are used to update the simulations for the physics steps. We also have some very specific ones for the leather bag, which you can find in the code. I will not go into detail into this function as, as the video would take too long. But before wrapping up, I wanted to show the waypoints.py file. And here we can see that we import from a markers module and use the visualization marker CFG. Inside we have two markers which are switching between red and green depending on if the goal is reached. So to wrap up the video, we have finished the Leatherback community project. Here we learned how to set up and run the training, explain the code by looking at every file that we had to import. I'll also make sure to include a part zero of how to create the 3D model. So stay tuned for that. So thank you for watching and if you have found this video helpful, consider subscribing and liking the videos so others can find this video as well. Bye!